So my name's Courtney Angus. Uh, my name's Tom Matthews. Hi, I'm Aaron Gunn. I'm from Penrith in New South Wales and I'm the current Wake Park World Champion. Wakeboarding can be towed by a boat or a cable system. Um, you've got a board on, similar to a snowboard. And here at the cable park, we get different jumps and rails and we can do flat water tricks too. Behind a boat, you just have like a wake that you jump over. We're here at the cable park, you have a cable system that tows you around. Uh, you also have floating kickers, rails, sliders, lots of obstacles to hit. Cables Wake Park is definitely the best cable facility in the world. We have two lakes with cables on them, we have system twos, we have quarter pipes, countless obstacles, it's just amazing. I started wakeboarding behind the boat. My parents had a boat when I was growing up, so I did a lot of wakeboarding back then. And I started competing when I was 16 years old. I guess I just started competing because I really wanted to get into the sport of wakeboarding and push it to that next level. I was 15 when this park reopened, and it had a massive influence on my wakeboarding. Uh, I was on the boat until this park opened, and then once this park opened, it made it way more accessible for me and I just came out here every day and started riding as much as I could. When I was crowned world champion, I was blown away. I've always dreamed to become a professional wakeboarder and standing on top of that podium was just the greatest feeling ever. Uh, the competition was pretty crazy. I've never been to Dubai before that event and just the level of riding was insane. There were so many good riders there. I happened to pull it out on the day and do my best and came away with the title. The quality of competition here is awesome. There's so many up and coming riders coming out of Australia and we're just going to dominate the cable wakeboard scene in the future years. The key to my success would probably be Cable's Wake Park. Without this place, I would have never gotten into cable wakeboarding and yeah, this place has just pushed my riding so far. You gotta be dedicated, you gotta you gotta wanna put in the hours on the water and off the water also and do everything you can to progress your riding. So first off we have the features format. That's a seven minute jam and in the seven minute jam everyone will be competing to win each individual obstacle. So on one obstacle it might be a rail, another obstacle might be a kicker. Hello and welcome to the 2016 Cable Wakeboard Nationals out here in Penrith, New South Wales. I'm very lucky to be with wakeboarding legend Mark Turtle McNamara. How are you Turtle? Um, very well, thank you Doug. Uh, yeah, it was a great weekend uh, had and uh, up on the water now we've got Megan Humphreys all the way from Bly Bly. So Bye Bye Cable Park situated on the Sunshine Coast. Every cable has got a variety of different obstacles, uh, whether they be jumps or rails, kickers, sliders, as they're known in the wakeboard, wakeboard world. Um, so we've got a few competitors here. We've got some big names in this division, from uh, Courtney Angus uh, probably being the, the one to note, uh, being the uh, current world champion. Um, so Turtle, I'm pretty excited to see what the riders can throw down uh, over the course of this weekend and, uh, and some of the highlights in front of us now. Yeah, definitely. Uh, up on the water at the moment, we've got uh, Lauren Hilda Darling. Uh, backside 180 onto the box there and backside 180 off. A really clean uh, nose press just there, coming off a little bit early. But uh, yeah, it's amazing to see the progression of, uh, of all the wakeboarders um, and the women's wakeboarding worldwide is stepping up and you mentioned earlier Courtney Angus the uh, current women's world champion uh, definitely pushing the sport and yeah it's, uh, it's just really amazing to see where she's taking it and where she's pushing the other girls to take their riding too. So it's Emma Cornish on the water currently wearing the uh, orange jersey uh, Emma's uh, done some nice hits so far we've got a nice 540 hillside 540 just Unlucky to butt checking that a little bit, but um, still not a bad, not a bad hit, and full pull along that rail as well. Um, this is actually Courtney Angus, who we've just been uh, speaking about. She's um, she's got a lot of tricks and on a variety of obstacles, and you can see that uh, 
she's definitely uh, within her comfort zone and, um, and probably not uh, not too phased um, with these rails. She's travelled the world, she's seen a lot of cable parks, um, so I'd imagine uh, that experience will stand her in good stead uh, for this weekend. So we've seen some good stuff there from the Open Women Rail Jam. Uh, these are the results in first place, Courtney Angus. Second place, Emma Cornish, followed by Lauren Hilda Darling. Up next, the Open Men Division of the Rail Jam format, and some big names in this division. We've got uh, Aaron Gunn, the current Wake Park World Champion. Um, how do you reckon it'll go, Turtle? Yeah, Aaron's uh, a really good competitive rider. Um, as you can see, he's been the world champion for the last two years running. Up now in the water, we've got uh, Central Coast wakeboarder Adam Ewell. He uh, crosses over as he also is a skateboarder and uh, motocross rider. So he's transitioned to the sport of wakeboarding. So, uh, yeah, it's been very impressive. I totally agree, Turtle. It's uh, definitely a benefit to these riders if they have been on uh, other boards before and are proficient at snowboarding or skateboarding. It's uh, certainly going to help them in the uh, in the wakeboard world. Yeah, definitely. And then we've got Tom spinning uh, toe side backside up under that transfer on the A frame, hitting the Alps here, big front side 360 off. Um, yeah, it's been amazing to watch Tom's progression in the sport for the last few years. Um, he's just yeah really starting to leaps and bounds get better, except for that That's crash right there. <laughs> perfect timing for uh, for a comment like that, and I totally agree. Uh, Tom uh, Tom's got a huge bag of tricks now. Um, well, there you go, Hillside 900, uh, it's not bad. Up on the water now we've got uh, Queensland rider Jamie Neville. Um, yeah, Jamie's been heading over to the States for the last couple of years and uh, really sort of his riding's really improved and uh, yeah, it's good to see. There with the big transfer, um, good to see his competition level is really stepping up. So you see Jamie wearing a knee brace there, has had previous knee problems. It's, uh, it's pretty intense on your body, wakeboarding at a good level. Uh, there's certainly uh, a few hits and a few crashes that uh, take their toll. Jack Badode in blue wearing number four, um, all the way from the UK riding at JB Ski and uh, riding for O'Brien Wakeboards. Uh, just a little, a little bit of a butt check there uh, on that landing, um, but uh, a pretty comfortable rider that's been riding at the top of the sport in Europe for uh, for a little while. Yeah, that's right. And uh, seeing him spin, or oh, just missing that handle on that front side 900 there, uh, he'd be a little bit disappointed. And up on the water now is Aaron Gunn, the two-time wakeboard world champion, uh, spinning toe side backside five on that hit. So Aaron uh, originally starting his wakeboarding career as a boat rider, and uh, when Cable Wake Park Penrith opened up, uh, transferred his skills over to the wake park scene. Um, Aaron's travelled all over the world and competed in some pretty high-profile high competitions, uh, as Turtle said, uh, the, the current world champion. I mean, you can see a lot of that uh, from and how easily he rides his wakeboard, uh, as you can from Busty Dunn, who's on your screens now. Mm, that's correct. Uh, Busty's one of the most uh, technically, naturally talented wakeboarders you'll see out there today, and um, it's amazing to see these younger guys stepping it up and at a world level. Busty really is one of the best out there at the moment. I couldn't agree more, Total, and uh, we've seen some great riding today. Leaving Busty top of the leaderboard, second place Aaron Gunn and third place all the way from the UK, Jack Battleday. I started wakeboarding, I came from growing up we were like skiing a lot behind the boat and then I just saw wakeboarding one day and it just made me want to do it. I started competing wakeboarding just because I found it, there was lots of friends at every competition and it took me places I'd probably never go. Wakeboarding has taken me to most places across Australia, especially on the east coast. It's also taken me to Thailand, uh, America. Uh, I find Penrith is probably the best cable park that I've ever been to compared to any other cable park. Um, there is still a lot of good ones over the world, but I find this one has it all. It has two lakes, has obstacles that are super, super hard and super fun. It's also got a quarter pipe, it's got everything. Uh, this year I'm going to France for wakeboarding as well as London, America, um, and then obviously through Australia as well. Being a wakeboarder, probably most girls don't even know what wakeboarding is, so 
just got to make up some excuse. I generally just say I'm like a rapper or something, and that doesn't work either. <laughs> Traditional cable is one person on the water at a time. You get one lap to throw down your best run you possibly can, showing the judges you can do things left foot, right foot forward, switch, regular, backside, front side, everything you can possibly do you want to throw down. So next we have the under 19 junior girls traditional cable. Uh, it's only one rider out on the water at a time. For this one, uh, we've got four riders in this division, uh, so we'll uh, we'll see what they've got for us. And first off the dock is Rhea Danny Banyard uh, taking off uh, with her natural stance, uh, heading towards the kicker. The conditions out there look, uh, it's not too sunny, but it's uh, definitely flat conditions, which is great for this kind of riding. So it's certainly easier for these guys if they're only out on the water by themselves. Uh, riders in front and behind can make a difference to, uh, to the level of riding. Um, especially with choppy water, it does make your approach to the obstacles a little bit harder than it normally would be. That's right, Doug, and Rhea hitting that Kazen rail switch, uh, coming in, finishing her run off with a 5.1 at a total of 10 points. So not a bad first run there. Uh, next on the water is Gabby Wheeler. Gabby just a little bit wobbly on that rail, but getting the full pull. Uh, just approaching the fun box, left foot forward. Nice transfer up, but again, not quite getting to the end of that A-frame part of the obstacle. As you can see, handle position is really important. Uh, she's got a little in, a little bit too close to the body there, which is kind of putting her balance off. But uh, competition can put you under a lot of pressure and you kind of get a little bit wobbly at times. But finishing her run off with a tantrum there, and uh, it's a pretty good score of 5.5. Yeah, not a bad score there. Next on the water, Hunter Sky Brown heading out to that multi-level Kaysen rail. Uh, a few of those rails named after pro riders from around the world. Uh, she'll be heading left foot forward into the fun box on the outside of the lake. Uh, not a bad pull there and coming off uh, backside 180, landing blind, facing away from the cable. Yeah, and Hunter now riding into that outs rail, hitting the rail Pulling that handle in. Oh, no. A little bit too much weight over that front foot there. Uh, I think here on the replay, you can see as she takes off, she uh, has that handle in a little bit too far, which puts her out of position. Too much weight over the front foot, and uh, she, yeah, she'll be a bit disappointed with that. She uh, ending up with a 3.0. Uh, next on the water, Holly Watt. Um, Holly riding... Uh, riding out of her skin at the moment, she, uh, she's got a, definitely got a slightly different approach to wakeboarding than the other girls. She's certainly one to, uh, to cut harder obstacles. Uh, go big or go home is probably the, uh, the mant mantra that she, uh, she lives by. Yeah, that's right, Doug. Uh, Holly really pushes the levels of her riding. I think she's one of very few women that's... Uh, can, I think she may have landed a double flip off the kicker, uh, which is coming into here. We'll see what she's got. Um, oh, coming off short there, trying for the Olay frontside 540, uh, but finishing off with a 8.5. And that's still enough to leave Holly in top spot, followed by Gabby rear and Hunter in fourth spot. So on to the under 19 boys in the traditional format. I'm pretty excited to see the level of riding. A lot of these riders will be performing Tricks from the water, um, Cameron Bruce definitely one to watch out for, uh, along with uh, one of Wakeboard's true gentlemen, Corey Olsen. Uh, so we've got Cam Bruce on the water now, uh, again on that Kaysen rail. You'll see a lot of riders uh, landing blind, facing away from the cable, and also performing tricks uh, directly from the water. Not a bad first couple of hits from Cam Bruce, you'll agree, Terts? Yeah, definitely. Uh, these young guys are really stepping up their riding, hitting the Z rail there. Coming in, oh, there's, there's a front flip to blind. You'll see that as the riders progress, uh, the level, our oh, backside 720, really nice finishing with a 7.0. So for those of you that don't know, they uh, the riders actually load up the cable itself and uh, perform tricks directly from the water, so it opens up a whole other area of the sport for these guys to be judged on. And that's right, hitting the flat bar now is uh, Tom Matthews, local rider to Penrith, uh, really stepping up his level of riding. He's actually head over the, to the States at the moment and travelling around the world. Tommy not, uh, not one known for his water tricks, uh, you see a big smile on his face uh, landing that left foot forward roll to revert and finishing with a 5.8. Okay, up on the water now is Baden Brown. 
uh, in the number three bib in red, about to hit that A-frame and transfer backside 360 to backside 180 out. Seen Baden uh, actually riding a little bit um, this weekend. He's a pretty casual looking rider as you can see, just uh, with a left foot forward roll to revert. Yeah, coming all the way from Go Wake Mackay. Um, the guys have been here for about a week all practicing and getting used to riding at the Penrith Cable. Uh, doing a Moby Dick there to finish things off. Finishing with a 6.8. It's great to see that uh, Australia's newest cable park up in Mackay is producing such talented riders, Total. Yeah, they're definitely stepping up. Uh, as of just wakeboarding in general, I think over the last few years has really stepped up. Here up on the lake, we have Blake Muller. Very stylish rider um, coming in here with a frontside crypt. So pretty tight on those bottom corners out here in Penrith, so you might not see too many water tricks performed down that way. Uh, a lot of the riders just giving themselves a little bit of a breather before they hit the back straight. Uh, it gets pretty intense after that, but uh, you'll probably see some water tricks happening now. Yes, you did. A left foot forward roll to revert, followed by a right foot forward back roll to blind. Coming in with a switch dance, toe side, backside seven, landing that clean and finishing his runoff with a 6.9. Pretty strong looking rider, Blake Miller. Uh, next on the water, Lachlan Elliott. Um, again, pretty cruisy. He's got that uh, pretty laid back sort of style. Um, certainly uh, got a few tricks up his sleeve. And, and there's one of them, a nice 360 transfer over the fun box. Coming in there backside for a roll to Reaver, landing that nice and clean. Hitting that bank rail there, 270 on, um, is really starting to develop his style. And uh, yeah, looking really smooth on the water there. And hitting that kicker with a front side 900, just coming a bit unstuck and uh, finishing that run off there with a 5.2. It was uh, a good run, uh, see how it places him. And uh, up on the water now, we've got local rider Corey Olsen. Corey, definitely one of my favourite riders to watch. Um, again, just a really laid back style. Also one of the true gentlemen of the wakeboarding scene. He's um, always one to really enjoy the sport and um, you can just see that in his riding. He's, he's happy, relaxed. Uh, normally got a smile on his face. Yeah, definitely. Him and his uh, older brother put, really push each other with their riding and in the last sort of 12 months you can really see that it's uh, progressed them both and coming up with a, a heel side crypt, um, hitting the kicker there with a indie tan from the blind and finishing off his run with a smooth 7.5. Yeah, great to see Corey performing, uh, performing really well in that division. And finishing first with a 7.5, followed by Cameron Bruce and Blake Muller in third. Next up, the Open Women in the same traditional format that you've just seen. And on your screen is current Features World Champion Courtney Angus, who will start us off in this Open Women traditional format. That's right, Doug. And uh, Courtney is also just uh, about to head over for the season overseas, which uh, no doubt she'll do really well, like she has done in the previous years. Hitting that top step and then uh, up on the front lip on the Kazen, she'll head over to the A-frame, it looks like. And, yep, she's about to transfer. Oh, nice frontside three onto that. Lots of variety from Courtney on her rail hits. Uh, she's certainly... As Turtle said, uh, performed at a high level for a little while now. Um, she's got to experience a lot of different cable parks all over the world. Yeah, um, that certainly stood her in good stead. That's right, Doug. And uh, coming in, oh, big oh, Ollie right. up. Yeah, going into backlit nose blunt. Ollieing over the top of that bank rail and then onto the end of the Alps. So pretty hard Ollieing onto some of these obstacles. They're pretty high. They're, uh, they're at least above knee height. You can see there. Pretty nearly waist height for Courtney, uh, ollieing right over that rail. Some yeah, stuff. definitely. That's a really big ollie, uh, especially to go with you, to get your back of your board up over the top of that rail into blunt slide. It's very difficult. So a nice roll to read that there into the middle of the lake, setting her up perfectly for a left foot forward hit on the kicker, and that's a heel side 540. And uh, Courtney smiling there. She's pretty happy. Not yeah, a bad run. Definitely. Uh, she definitely should be happy with that run. She's uh, shown a lot of variety there. Put her air trick in, which not too many of the women are doing at the moment. Yeah, I don't know if we'll see any other air tricks from the uh, women in this division. Uh, next on the water, Emma Cornish, and just nearly slipping out on that case and rail. That's, uh, that was a little bit sketchy, but uh, she gets away with it. And um, coming up to the A-frame and a nice transfer. Full pull all the way along that A-frame section. 
As you can see there, yeah, just kind of getting a little bit bobbly off the uh, takeoff and didn't get the handle right. But as she comes into the handrail, oh, not quite getting the line she was after and uh, coming off a little bit short. She's heading back over to the Z rail, which looks like she's coming in on her toes and uh, front board. Yeah, so pretty tough some of these obstacles. They're pretty high and uh, as you can see there's no on-ramp to that obstacle so you really have to ollie up right onto the top of it. Uh, not quite getting her weight up on top unfortunately. Uh, but the next trick is the wave kicker. And maybe just opening Ooh. up slightly early. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Um, and just... Uh, not quite getting away with it unfortunately. Yeah, you can see there on the replay that her arm just got a bit away from her which uh, kind of put her weight over the heels. And on the water now we've got uh, Malin Overby hitting the Kazen rail. Nice hit all the way to the end of that. Looks like uh, she was maybe thinking about a grab on the end of her board there. She's got her arm across her body. Looking like something might be happening but a uh, nice 360 along that A-frame part. And we see the replay, yeah, she looked like she was going across with the front hand there. As you can also see, it looks like it's starting to rain a bit with those drops of water hitting the uh, the lake, which can be a little bit off-putting. Um, not quite getting a line there on the bank rail that she was after, but uh, as she heads into the kicker now, see what she's got. Ooh, a tantrum, yeah, nice, nice landing. Tantrum. So that'll put an end to her run, and uh, she should be quite happy with that. So wait for the judges to deliberate and see what kind of score she gets. Definitely uh, strong with that front arm, which will definitely help her as she progresses her riding. Yeah, and now we've got uh, Eliza up on the water, quite one of the uh, the stylish riders in the women's category. Yeah, nice full pull along that A-frame. Uh, and again, a nice uh, nice hit of the Kazen rail there as well. Um, keeping her eyes up, looking towards the next obstacle, which is always a good thing. Yeah, a lot of these women uh, ollieing up onto that handrail. Yeah, that's, a, that's a pretty high ollie um, as she heads into the Z rail. Quite hard to see um, actually the profile of that rail from the camera angle we've got now, but it does mean the rider has to transfer their weight from one foot to the other just to stay on for the full length of the rail. Oh, nice. Roll the revert there. Another, uh, another woman out there doing flat water tricks. And there I was saying that I didn't think any of them were doing them, but uh, it turns out I was definitely wrong, and that's a, a great looking roll to revert. Certainly never in doubt. Finishing up with a hillside 540, just about checking that just a little bit by getting away with it. So the results, Courtney Angus finishing in first, Emma Cornish followed by Malin Overby in third position. The next division we have up is the open men traditional format. Uh, you'll see the riders performing a variety of tricks, including probably more tricks off the water. Uh, first off the dock, Zach Gwyn Griffith, followed by Alex Clamoso, Adam Newell, Jay Olsen, Jack Battleday, and last on the dock is Busty Dunn. Okay, and up first we have Zach Gwyn Griffith. All uh, the way from the UK. That's right, he's been working at uh, Penrith Cable for the summer and uh, he's really been pushing his riding this year. There'll um, be a few kids on the lake uh, cheering this guy on, uh, being that he's coached them all season. Yeah, for sure. Uh, not having the run that he's probably hoping for at the moment. Um, the lines are sort of a little bit sketchy and the handle positioning not so good, but coming in to ollie up onto that handrail. Not mm. a bad hit. He doesn't look very comfortable out there. Um, at the moment, it'll be uh, interesting to uh, see what he has to say about his run when we catch up with him later. Yeah. But um, yeah, definitely not not uh, not his normal self. Definitely not. Coming off a little bit early on that Alps hit. Uh, looks like he's coming back in for his first water trick. Oh, end over in front. Oh, a little sketchy on that landing. Landing, landing a little bit heavy. Uh, probably not absorbing the landing with his knees quite as much as he uh, as he perhaps should have done. That's right. And coming in toe side for his last hit on the wave kicker. Oh, going for the grab. Oh, just missing that handle. Uh, he was going for an off-axis backside frontside 540. But, uh, yeah, as we can see back in slow-mo on the replay, not quite getting the line and the handle positioning. Yeah, I mean, every every landing there wasn't probably quite what he wanted. The tricks, uh, tricks themselves, certainly not easy by any stretch of the imagination. But, um, yeah, just not quite coming together for Zach, unfortunately. Yeah, that's right, Doug. And uh, the overall fluidity of the run plays a big factor in your overall point score. But uh, now off the dock, we've got Alex24 Clamoso. So the only rider that has a number for a nickname. Um, it's been uh, been kicking around with him for a little while now. But uh, Alex is definitely one who's known for um, 
a huge variety of tricks, whether they're right foot forward or left foot forward. Um, no doubt we'll see uh, some water tricks like oh that KGB. Oh my god, that, uh, that's massive and it's so difficult to do that in that part of the cable landing in the corner that uh, fast. If you come unstuck, you're definitely landing on the, on the bank. You notice uh, that he is definitely packing in the tricks. Um, we'll see some pretty impressive stuff down the other end of the lake, uh, lake no doubt. Yeah, and when you hear the name uh, 24 Clamoso, you think instantly of big water tricks. And uh, coming into this corner, I'm sure we're going to see something. Oh my a double gosh, S the bend to blind. double S to blind. That's a very big trick uh, and it one that really hurts if you get it wrong. For wakeboarders uh, that have been around a little while, like myself and Turtle, the... Uh, before obstacles were present on the cable, the uh, water tricks were the, were the big thing to do. And uh, Alex uh, finishing off his run with a great kicker hit too, uh, Tantrum to blind. That's right, and uh, looking back at his replay, uh, transferring onto that A-frame, you sort of got to, you need to have a good plan of strategy of what you want to do so that it doesn't sort of overwhelm you while you're out on the water. But looking back at that double S to blind, that is so massive and such a hard trick and difficult uh, to do at any time, uh, let alone being under pressure. Alex, definitely one of the big uh, standouts in the water tricks department. Uh, next on to the water is Adam Yule. Uh, Adam, one of our one of the local riders out at Cables Wake Park, Penrith. And hasn't been riding for too long. We did uh, we did see some footage of him in the rail jam earlier on. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what he has when it comes to water tricks. Yeah, definitely. I know Adam rides a lot with uh, world champion Aaron Gunn. The two of them are quite close friends and spend a lot of time riding together. So I think that's really helped with the, how quickly Adam has picked up his riding. Yeah, definitely. I would say that um, the, probably the last few months has seen a, a huge progression in what, uh, what Adam can do on the water. Doesn't look too happy with that hit, but um, that's okay. He has performed pretty well so far in this run. Uh, there's a left foot forward roll to revert, and followed by a right foot forward roll to revert. So Adam is showing that he can do uh, water tricks both sides of the cable, which uh, will no doubt help him with the judging. That's right, and mixing them up, going one way and then back the other way, definitely helps with the overall composition of your run with the judges. But uh, backside 540, landing it nice and clean and throwing the handle to finish his run off. I don't know, judging by his body language there, it doesn't seem that he would be uh, too happy with that run, but uh, from, a, from an outsider's point of view, I don't think he should be too disappointed. That's a nice switch tail front flip. Um, so Adam's uh, yeah, riding pretty good. Yeah, definitely. And uh, as you can see in the slow-mo there with his front flip, he grabbed the board, which will give you extra style points. And uh, the bigger brother of the two Olsen brothers is now out on the water. Starting things off on the Kazen is Jay Olsen. Certainly a huge uh, favourite with the crowd, uh, Jay Olsen uh, and and Corey Olsen indeed. They're, uh, they're they're both they're both well known for just just loving their time out on the water. A uh, nice hoochie glide there from Jay coming round uh, for his next hit on the handrail. Yeah, definitely in toe side. Definitely dug. And the other thing that the Olsen brothers are known for is their style. Uh, they really like to concentrate on. Oh wow, backside 360 over that knuckle of the Alps, uh, very difficult, very scary, and if you mess it up, oh 313, well in the last 12 months Jay's riding has just really picked up. Um, nice, nice nuclear butterfuco or seatbelt butterfuco, so coming back to revert at the end. All wrapping up here uh, as a new style of riding which is a lot of people are wrapping up. Oh, nice tuck knee, frontside 360. Perhaps landing a little bit heavy, would you agree, to? It's probably uh, seen him perform that one just a little bit better probably in practice, but uh, all in all, I would say, including this uh, back three over the knuckle, a pretty outstanding run from Jay Olsen. Yeah, definitely. And as you can see here, as he goes in in the slow-mo, you can see that he really tucks his knee down into the board, and uh, it's it just adds a whole other element to any trick really which is uh, really good to see. I guess the judge is really focusing on uh, on the style and the execution of each trick. Um, Jack Battleday has got a few big tricks up his sleeve who's on the water with us now. So 360 into a nose press all the way along wrapped on the rail. Yes. Um, Jack has some pretty good water tricks and that's the first toe side water trick that we've seen today so actually carving on his toe side edge and taking off. Uh, probably more normal to see people performing them from the hillside edge. Oh wow, that was nice. It was really hard to hit that handrail as good as he just hit it then. It's uh, quite narrow. 
Yeah, it's certainly uh, Jack making everything look pretty easy out there on the water. Uh, definitely known for his water tricks, which we'll see now, which is a Moog 540. Oh, wow. Very easy, straight onto his right forward hillside edge with a tail front to blind. So, some great stuff from Jack showing uh, showing his versatility in and out of the lake. Yeah, definitely. And uh, now coming in for his last hit on the wave kicker, we'll see all his progressive edge, a nice frontside melon 180. Um, so definitely seen Jack do bigger tricks off the kicker, but um, perhaps playing it safe just to get. A uh, good run locked away and in the bag. Yeah, and coming up, hitting all three of those stairs, coming into front lip on the Kazen. Here's that 540 Moog 5 that we saw before. Um, so that's a back roll with a 540 spin. Um, probably one of the most technical back roll based tricks, I guess you would uh, you would see on the cable. Yeah, that's right, Doug. And uh, up on the water is Cairns rider Busty Dunn um, coming in to hit the Felix rail. Um, you don't see too many people hitting that this weekend, so it's good to see him mixing it up. Especially uh, toe side. Yeah, definitely hard to hit a front, uh, front board like that. So Busty well known for a huge variety of tricks. Um, Ooh, 315 there from Busty. Nice. Um, and just everything he does is very clinical and very well executed. Busty's uh, definitely known for for being a very consistent, really good competition rider, as you can see, nothing looks like it's out of uh, out of his comfort zone, despite being uh, incredibly difficult and very technical. Yeah, that's right, Busty making things look so. E oh, oh my goodness! Five. Yeah, front mode fives. It's exactly what we were just saying. Uh, see what he comes in with here, <laughs> followed by a back mode five. He he really does make these tricks look like they're easy, but they're so difficult. Hitting the kick. <laughs> wow. Backside 1080, just these tricks uh, are so difficult to do and he just makes them look like they're absolutely effortless. And, and I suppose why get wet when you can just ride up onto the grass, exactly. do 10s, do as, front mode 5, back mode 5. Yeah, as you can see in the slow-mo replay there, the front mode 540 does a front flip with a full 540 rotation as followed by his back mode, which is a back roll with a full 540 rotation. Followed by a 1080 rotation, so... It wasn't long ago that 1080s weren't a thing, but it's put Busty on top of the leaderboard, followed by Alex Clamoso and Jack Battleday. wakeboarding in the family pool. My dad would run along the side of the pool and pull me up with a rope and kind of progressed from there and got behind the boat and started competing when I was seven years old. I guess it's always been in my family, like I love the lifestyle and ever since I was really young I just wanted to be a pro wakeboarder. When I was about 18 I travelled over to America and done the US Pro Tour, the American um, Triple Crown Series and after that I competed in Worlds and I actually won the World titles in my rookie year. From there I've won the US Monster Energy Triple Crown two years in a row. I've been Female Rider of the Year since 2013. I guess after competing in the US Monster Energy Triple Crown um, and seeing the level of the female riding I, I pushed myself and I knew exactly what I had to do to get the job done and be at the top level of women's wakeboarding. I love travelling around and I mean I meet so many awesome people in the American scene um, but yeah Australia we definitely have some of the top riders and some of the girls well I guess some of the girls here as well we've been able to take out the American podiums and have an all Aussie podium so it means that the level of female riding in Australia is definitely definitely the best in the world. So King of the Kicker is an event that is scored off the main jump. Uh, you get three passes, so three attempts at the jump where your best one counts off the kicker. So you can land three tricks, but the judges will only take your best trick. And the judges will be looking for how technical the trick is, how well you landed it, how high it went, things like that. So moving on to the under 19 junior girls king of kicker. 
Uh, Gabby Wheeler and Holly Watt will battle out for first and second in this division. And the best run of three will score. There's uh, young Alex Brooks from Bly Bly in Queensland. A uh, little shredder. He's also a snowboarder, so he spends his off-season at the snow. He's uh, summer-season wakeboarding. So Gabby Wheeler just going for a tantrum there, keeping the handle nice and close, which is good. So we'll, uh, we'll see that again in slow motion now. Coming all the way around, landing pretty nicely. Maybe do with keeping her chest up a little bit there and her shoulders back, but um, but not a bad effort. That's right, Doug. And Holly coming in for a first of three hits with the OHH, which stands for Other Hand Hoochie. So Holly going massive there, coming off the top third of that kicker. She's pretty much known for, for going pretty pretty hard at these kickers and uh, going pretty big. Yeah, she definitely got no fear when it comes to hitting kickers. But Gabby coming in for a second hit. Ooh, just a little sketchy on that 540, but... Uh, yeah, won't score too well, so um, yeah, we'll see how the judges do want to score that. But again, uh, the judging is looking for your best of three hits. So nice hit from Holly there with a late melon grab. Yeah, as you can see, Holly coming around, try and go for the melon grab. Not quite sure if she got it, but uh, the judges are right there, so they'll be able to see whether she did or not. Uh, Gabby going for a tantrum oh. to blind, unlucky. Uh, just seeming like her arm got a little bit away from her there. Um, not sure if she's got that trick totally unlocked, but she's put uh, two down so far. So uh, I guess it's the time to, to try something a little bit outside of your comfort zone. Yeah, definitely. And Holly coming in wrapped now. Oh, oh. looked like she was going for a wrapped KGB, which was, uh, it's a back roll with a rewound backside 360. I don't think that quite came off as Holly had hoped, but uh, still getting her first place. Obviously, that OHH was scored pretty highly from the judges, getting her a 6.5. So on to the under-19 boys, King of Kicker. Certainly some standouts in this department, with uh, Corey Olsen certainly being one of them, uh, who will be second off the dock. Uh, we've seen some great riding from uh, Lachlan Elliott and Blake Muller. But first off the dock with a oh, Moby, Moby Dick. Dick. It's, uh, the Moby Dick is a tantrum, which is a backflip with a backside 360. So Baden Brown really getting it done and getting a pretty big trick down first time. And Corey cutting in toe side into the kicker. We'll see what he's got. Well, he's got the toe side backside 540. Just landing wrap there from Corey, but uh, again, just looking pretty effortless. Probably uh, keeping it a little bit easy for his first hit to get a get a point on the board. Yeah. Now Jake Collins with a method frontside three. Oh, it's kind of like half between a method and a melon. See how he gets scored with that. So blue number four cutting in a left foot forward heel side. Jordan Putcher with a big tantrum there, just missing the grab, unfortunately. And the, uh, the slow-mo, I think, unfortunately confirming that didn't quite get what, to, what he'd hoped for. That's right. And uh, now up off the dock is Alex Barbara. Oh, going for a stalefish backside three. Kind of not really what he was probably looking for. Isn't Landing it? pretty heavy there, I think. Yeah, just kind of sketching that out and falling back onto his uh, back. And uh, now we've got local rider Adrian Mikulov. So Adrian with a nice tail, backside 180. Definitely coming a bit unstuck on the landing there. We'll see it here. Just kind of crumples a little bit and falls over his back foot. But uh, showing a bit of strength there to hold on and get away with that. Yeah, that's right. And up on the dock next is Lachlan Elliott. Ooh, oh. with the front side 900. Landing that smooth. Lachlan uh, is a, obviously a very strong rider. He's uh, in that really tucked up position when he spins, uh, making it really easy for him to to land and to spin and to pass the handle. A nice toe side, backside seven from Blake Muller there. Um, just throwing the handle, head goes down a little bit, but uh, I would say that's a pretty well executed toe side, backside seven. Um, so that brings us to the leaderboard. Uh, and Blake, who we've just seen in third place. Above him, Lachlan Elliott in second. And in first place, Baden Brown. Next up, the Open Women at King of Kicker. Um, again, best of three hits will count. Uh, first off the dock, we have Emma Cornish, followed by Lauren Hilda Darling, and last off the dock, current world champion Courtney Angus. So first on the water, we have Emma Cornish, um, all the way from Cairns. She's cutting in left foot forward. What, what's she got for us? 
Oh, frontside five. I really like the way she uh, keeps her knees tucked up. Uh, in she definitely that. looks composed and, and comfortable. Yeah, not not going off the highest point of the kicker, more towards the middle to the lower point, which, um, you know, it doesn't allow you to get to as much height, which uh, won't get you as many points. But uh, now off the kicker is Lauren. Oh, Stalefish, backside three going down, just not quite getting the landing she wanted. Unlucky there. So to grab to start with and then to come back the other way takes a fair bit of arm strength, but uh, Unlucky just comes a little bit unstuck there and sort of falls over the front of her of her board. Yeah, definitely. Um, she does have another two hits, so we will wait and see what she does. Now for her first of three is Courtney Angus coming in toe side, going for the toe side backside 360. Just maybe missing the grab there, but the uh, slow-mo will confirm that. Yes, definitely missed it, um, but uh, we'll, obviously we are not the judges, so we'll see what they say. Yeah, but uh, the, the good thing, you don't have to worry about uh, if having a bad hit because you've got those other two to make it up. So uh, now Emma again for a second. Toe, toe side, side backside back three. So same rotation or same direction of rotation as her heel side spin. Um, but uh, but some pretty good stuff there from Ember showing her versatility. Yeah, definitely. And just kind of like very good technique. She keeps her handle in nice and close and uh, those knees tucked up, which uh, definitely are going to help. So Lauren Hilda Darling, oh, I think she wanted to uh, perhaps do the same trick again, which was a a method, sorry, a stalefish backside 360, but um, but not on this hit. We'll see if she's got that next time around. Yeah, just didn't get quite the pop that she wanted, kind of off-balanced. And uh, Courtney coming in for hit number two, what she got on her toes. Courtney does have some flips, but uh, toe side, backside seven, but instantly pulling the handle in, just switching around a little bit on the landing, but uh, I think they'll still score her pretty well, you reckon, Turtle? Yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, the trick itself, she looks like she's having fun though, but uh, yeah, the trick itself is very difficult, um, but the landing's definitely going to not give her the best uh, point score, but we'll, uh, we'll have to go over and see what the judges think about that. So, Ooh. that is the oh, Stalefish no. Backside 360. Um, obviously, Lauren going to be disappointed with not sticking that third and final hit. It's about as close as you can get. Un unfortunately, not quite riding that one away. Now we can see in the replay, keeping the handle nice and close, but maybe overspinning slightly. Uh, but that brings us to Courtney Angus. Yeah. Oh, wow. Courtney hitting her final hit. I think she'd be uh, pretty stoked with that. As we look back on the replay, you can see taking off, crossing over with her front hand, grabbing the tail of her board and then spinning a 540. Um, she definitely should be happy with that. I think that's going to score her really high. Yep, no doubt the judges will be pleased to see riding of that calibre and it does put her in first place with a 5.5, followed by Emma Cornish and in third, Lauren Hilda Darling. So the final division of today's events with the Open Men King of Kicker. Um, first off the dock, Cameron Bruce, followed by Nick Mulvaney, Busty Dunn, Jay Olsen, Jack Battleday and Tom Matthews. We'll see 1080s, we'll see double flips and uh, starting with Cameron Bruce with a backside 720 from Cameron. Uh, a nice pretty good landing. start to this division. Yeah, definitely. He'd be happy with that landing. It was uh, as he takes off, comes around and yeah, just really clean, really controlled and uh, I think he'd be really happy with that. So uh, definitely something up in the water in Cairns. They've uh, consistently produced some of the best riders in Australia for a long time now. Yeah, local rider Nick Mulvaney with a massive method. Oh, coming, just coming unstuck. Yeah, coming unstuck. It's really difficult to uh, take tricks that high and come down with that kind of impact onto a flat water. Um, he'll be a bit disappointed, but, uh, you know, Chang is definitely uh, charges of that kicker. I would say that uh, landing blind when you're going that big would probably be uh, a challenge for anyone and uh, unfortunately not quite sticking it. Okay, and off now, Busty Dunn with a backside 900, clean as ever. Uh, not not so, such a high trick, but definitely technical. I would say that it says a lot about the caliber of Busty's riding when the 900 is a warm up. <laughs> yeah, um, definitely. Backside nine is uh, is is a lot harder than Busty just made that look. Yeah, definitely a, a backside 900 would, uh, a year or two ago, would definitely be the final trick, not your opening trick. And uh, Jay Olsen with his tuck knee wrap frontside 360. Um, not the most technical trick, but definitely one for the style bucket. 
I would say that uh, probably those two tricks in a row shows the uh, variety in the wakeboarding that we've uh, got out on the lake today. Um, everything from the uh, from the big spin to the uh, pure style and everything in between. Yeah, definitely. And uh, oh, double flip attempt. Jack Battleday just coming, uh, not quite getting the rotation he was after. Not sure if he's ever landed that one before, but uh, definitely a big trick to uh, try to open with. You tend to see riders uh, that are completing that trick comfortably, um, at least grabbing their board pretty early on in the rotation. It helps you stay tucked up and uh, spin nice and fast. Yeah, and up on the water now, we've got to Tommy Matthews spinning easily a frontside 900. A hillside 9 from Tom there. That's, uh, that's pretty impressive, um, getting the grab there early on, um, or a quick tap. Um, but the judges will definitely score that uh, pretty highly and straight off the very top edge of that kicker. So not a bad hit from Tommy. I'm sure he'll be pretty happy with that one. Uh, Cam Bruce for his second hit with a heelside backside seven. I'm um, just sitting down a little bit on that landing. I, uh, I think the judges might have a little bit to say about that. Yeah, as you can see here in the slow-mo replay, uh, as he comes down, just kind of not quite got the height he was after and a little bit off balance and a bit too much on the back foot there and just kind of slid out. But it's enough to give him a point score. And here we got Changers with a massive method. Oh, oh. backside 180. Landing that. a little bit heavy on that landing, but... Uh, method to uh, to blind going that big that's uh, that's a pretty impressive trick and i'm sure the judges will uh, enjoy seeing that sort of stuff yeah that's one of my favorite tricks to watch uh definitely a difficult trick to uh it doesn't look too too difficult but it actually is quite difficult going into that method position and then stopping and then going back into the 180 is uh, quite difficult but uh see how the judges score that and uh, busty dunn up with his second hit Oh. Outside, backside 1080 from Busty. Uh, so we saw a backside 9 last time, and we see a backside 10 just this time. Just effortless. Just, uh, just nothing for Busty to perform at this level and, uh, and to do it repeatedly as well. Um, I would not be surprised if we see Busty throw a hammer down on nearly every kicker hit. Oh, Jay, coming up, oh, not quite sticking that, but... Uh, he was attempting the wrap tuck need frontside 360 with a rewind backside 180. So when we talk about rewind, it's basically stopping the direction you're spinning and uh, traveling back in the same direction. Uh, it takes a huge amount of strength. Um, you'll see here, stops and comes back. Unfortunately, not getting that handle quite close enough to his body and getting pulled out the back. And uh, oh, Jack going for another double, not quite getting it. Um, well, he definitely didn't get it, but uh, just sort of coming around too short. Just bringing the handle across his body a little bit there as well. Yeah, I think what helps with a double is getting that grab. And as you can see, his hand's not quite where he wants it to be on the board and uh, slows your rotation down. Suddenly pretty keen to hang on. Uh, Tommy Matthews with a Ooh. frontside three, a backside three rewind. Again, those rewind tricks probably only popular in the last couple of years of wakeboarding. Um, definitely something that's pretty new to the sport. Yeah, definitely. And uh, normally you see Tommy land these kinds of things, but uh, just having an off day. And uh, Cameron Boost coming around for his third of three hits. Another backside 720. So we've seen three backside sevens from Cam. Uh, I think definitely the first one was the cleanest um, by a fairly long way, I would say. Um, the other two just sits down a little bit not quite as clean. Yeah, it looks like uh, he was probably thinking about a bigger trick than a seven, but uh, Nick, oh, Nick Mulvaney going for a melon frontside 360 and not quite getting what he was after. Just see his hand there reaching out, desperately trying to get the back edge of that board, uh, not quite coming off the way he would like it, but, um, but still he did uh, put down a, a massive method to blind on his last hit. And Busty done for his last of three, another backside 10, just sticking that with ease. It's not every day you can say another backside 1080. Um, but he's just pumping tricks out of the kicker, which um, a couple of years ago just weren't even done, even probably a year ago. And Busty just, it's effortless. It's, um, it's every time and it's just, you know, it's solid. He's even looking back at the kicker when he lands to say, oh, maybe I could have done it even better than that. Oh, Jay with another wrap. Oh, oh, just going down there. Looked like he. Running a bit heavy, I reckon. Yeah, looked like he was going for that wrap frontside three, backside 180 again. Totally says a lot about Jay's character um, as a rider and as as a person that he's um, you know he's always smiling, and just just loves being out there. <laughs> you can see he smiles there, makes a gesture to the crowd, 
that he's done. He's done enough riding today, but he's uh, he's loved it. Yeah, definitely. I think that uh, glance over to his girlfriend there, just saying, <laughs> nope, I've had enough. But uh, Jack on his third hit, oh, it looked like he was going for the double, but just didn't quite get the pop that he was after. So that'll actually be the, the scored... Uh, the scored trick to the judges, um, just a left it forward roll to revert. Um, definitely not the top of uh, what Jack can do, but uh, he's held on. He's going to do another one, and oh, oh, unlucky. He's coming up a bit short on that one. Yeah, pulling the handle across his body and uh, just slowing himself down a little bit. Um, I haven't seen Jack land that this week, as you were mentioning, Turtle, so, um, so maybe that's a new one for him. Yeah, definitely. He's definitely getting close to it, just not quite getting the rotation he's after. Yeah, it's unlucky. Every kicker is slightly different at every different cable park, so uh, the riders have to adapt and learn to, uh, to ride each obstacle um, as they travel to park to park. Yeah, definitely. You can see he's trying to grab onto uh, his knee there to speed his rotation up, but uh, Tom Matthews for his last hit, ooh, coming in a little unlucky. bit... Coming up a bit short, not quite pleased with that as you can see on his facial expressions. It's, uh, it's very hard to stop yourself and generate enough speed to spin back the other way. Um, I've seen Tom land that a number of times before, um, so it's, uh, it's a shame we didn't quite put it down quite as it hoped for. So that does conclude the hit for the Open Men King of Kicker. Uh, in top spot, Nick Mulvaney with a massive method glide to blind. Very closely followed by Busty Dunn with a backside 1080. In third place, Jay Olsen, followed by Tom Matthews, Cameron Bruce, and Jack Battleday. Oh, double flip attempt, Jack Battleday. Oh my goodness, yeah, front mode five. Here we got Changers with a massive effort. Oh, backside 180.